guys, it is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. Got another great one from Van Halen. It's just an endless trove of amazing rock music um, that we get to pull from. I'm going to do Romeo Delight today. All of it, all the riffs, all the little fills, Eddie's solo. I'm going to tackle the entire thing. It's the first one off of Women and Children First, so uh, maybe I'll start cracking taking down, that album down now. So anyway, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is so fun to play through. The riffs are incredible. Eddie's, Eddie's always amazing, so we're going to really dive, take a deep dive into it. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring the notification bell, of course, so you'll know when I release a new video. And when I release a video, please, you know, give it a listen. Uh, you know, maybe like and comment. It really helps uh, the whole algorithm thing. You know, people find my videos on YouTube. Um, and if you really want to support what I want to do, what I do here on YouTube with all these, uh, you know, song lessons for everybody, um, please check out my Guitar Academy. Um, not only will you learn to be able to transcribe your own music and don't even need me anymore, uh, but it really helps what I do here on YouTube. I couldn't do all this stuff on YouTube without people uh, as being members of my academy. The academy contains all my guitar courses covering everything from um, complete beginner stuff to more advanced courses in improvisation, ear training, theory, uh, technique, guitar tone, you name it. So it's just a lot going on over there. So please come join us. Got a great community over there already. Um, and uh, we are going to jump into the, oh, by the way, that link gives you a free seven day trial of the academy. Look at that. So try that, click that link. So let's go into this song. We are tuned down a half step. Uh, so we're tuning in E flat standard. So it's gonna be E flat. A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. You already know that, I'm sure. I don't need to call out those notes. It's kind of redundant when you're doing a Van Halen song because if you don't know what E flat tuning is and how to get it, you're probably not ready for this. But anyway, if I don't do it, people still point it out. So I did it. So let's take a look at this intro. <laughs> All right, so now we have this tap harmonic thing that some of the harmonics on the album don't quite come out that loudly, but when you see him play it live, you can see what he's actually was doing on the li on the recording where you can kind of hear the harmonics pop out, but sometimes they kind of not exactly hitting it like he should, uh, or you know he's not using the most you know is they're just recording this live in the studio, so it's it's pretty much uh, you know you get what you get. So I'll show you that those kind of discrepancies coming up in a second. So what we're doing first is we're going to be tapping that harmonic, the 12th fret over the tap that 12, low E string, 12th fret harmonic. So I'm just smacking right above the fret. So I get that harmonic there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have the 7th fret on the A string. You're going to tap the 12th fret there on that A. Then slide it down to five, and then and then pick that, tap that twelfth fret again on the A string. Then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start with a harmonic on the low E, but now that tap at the seventh fret, uh, tapping the twelfth fret. You're gonna do basically what you did on the A string, but you're gonna do it on the D. Let's let's say it that way. So it's just this. So those taps right at the 12th fret, and your fingers there at the seventh. Slide down to five, and then tap that 12th fret again. So we have this on the A string first, and then the D. Now here's where he mixes it up, and you'll see, sometimes see people repeat that exact same thing. Oh, oh, whatever, we see covers of it or whatever. But what Eddie actually is doing, you can kind of hear it on the recording. That's like the harmonics don't come out that great on the recording, but you definitely hear it even when he's, I watched live videos from back in the day, right around the time he recorded this, all the way up to like 2015. It, what he does when he goes around and repeats the riff, he starts the same way. But when he slides down to that fifth fret, instead of tapping, the 12th fret again, he taps the 14th. Now the reason that harmonic is hard to get to come out as well, because that's like a kind of a ninth fret harmonic, which isn't as strong as the seventh fret harmonic. So it's not gonna be a or, or, um, So this is like a, this is a fifth fret harmonic, which is pretty strong. And then 
that's a seventh fret harmonic, or seven frets up from the fretted note. But when you get to the ninth fret, you'll kind of hear that note in there, but it's hard to really make a come out roll. So that second time around, he does that for both the notes on the A and the D strings. So we have this. So that, that, that harmonic was at that. Now you really don't hear it like that on the recording. You pretty much hear that note because he didn't quite hit the harmonic and you're, so you, therefore you hear mostly the fretted note when he hits that string. But like I said, watch the live videos. You can see what he's actually trying to do there. So we have this. All right, fun stuff. And then we're into um, the main riff. All right, so that's just kind of, uh, just kind of a really, just kind of an eighth note feel. I'm just going down, up, down, up, down, up. He doesn't really do a He has a more relaxed feel to it. So you can just do it with alternate picking. So we have this. But then you hit the power chord there, the seventh fret of the A, ninth fret on the D there. Kind of slide down to five. And then down to the open A power chord. And then we gotta do the same thing like we were doing in the intro. We're now gonna take everything over to the D string except for the low E, gonna keep that eighth notes going there. And then you're gonna play, kind of play that uh, the seventh fret power chord there off the D string. So that's the seventh fret on the D, ninth on the G. Slide that down to five. And then we go to a D power chord. Now he has a D power chord with an A in the bass. So that open A string is in the bass there. So. Not a full D major chord, just nothing on that high E string, just those four middle strings. And the second fret on the G, third fret on the B. So the open A and D strings, so it is. Repeat. And then end it with a, that, the low E power chord just hit twice. And now we're to verse number one, which is very similar to verse number two. There's just that little tap thing at the very end of it that's different. So what he does here is he plays the second fret on the G and the third fret on the B. So first you're gonna roll your volume off. You're gonna pick these two notes and you're gonna slowly bring the volume in so not all the way up, just kind of maybe to you know, three or four or whatever. And as you roll the volume up, you're going to be bending that note on the G string there. So we have this. Let me play through it for you real quick, and then I'll, I'll kind of explain how to play it. So here we go. That little tap thing at the end there uh, is a little bit different in the second verse. So we start with that, those two hits that ended that. Then you roll the volume off and you grab that second fret on the G and third fret on the B like we mentioned before and pick those two notes. And I'm bending up just the note on the G string so it's an oblique bend while I'm rolling up the volume a little bit. Then you're gonna release that bend and slide down the note on the third fret down to the second. So as you release, so it's like, just like that, so it is. And then hit the power chord again. And then do the exact same thing you did here at the second fret, but at the seventh fret. And then the hits again. That same thing down here again, the second fret. And now when you get to this chord uh, the second time, so that he's playing this, kind of hybrid pick this. 
So I'm picking that G string there with the pick. I know he holds the pick differently, so I'm not exactly, but it's actually, he's kind of got this snappy quality about it. So he's partially fingering picking this. So you play that, play those two notes, pull off to the open G on the, on the, there, and then, and then back to this, and then pull off the open G again. And when he pulls off to the open G the second time, you might want to kill that B string so you don't hear that anymore. All right, and then back to that again, and then up at the seventh fret. Now here, there's this little tap that he's gonna play from tap 17 and slide up to 19 to end it there. So we have that, we have that lash of the And then we're to that big main riff again. Alright, so that's kind of the, I consider the chorus section to really have like two riffs to it. I don't know, it's kind of like they have that big chorus riff, which is that main riff of the song. And then we go into this section, which I don't know, what's this, maybe it's kind of a, a different version of the verse, or, or maybe just uh, the second half of the chorus or whatever. So. It, it's fun to play. So I'm just, I don't know. I'm just going to call it the second half of the chorus. So basically what we're doing here, we do that main riff. So after we've just done that far, instead of going over to the D, do that. I think you do this. And then we just kind of... It's kind of like you'll kind of chug around on a low E power chord. There's kind of a slide down, so what's actually going on there. And then we get to this new section. So that new section is here. All right, so we're gonna start here with this. Um, so that's playing three, uh, two, one, zero. You're kind of pull it off, pick two, pull off the one, pull off to the open. And then you're gonna do the same thing here, but off the third fret, pulling off the two, and then the open A on the, on the A string. And the timing is different here. Like, so these are slower, but then, so these are second three are faster. down to the uh, third fret on the low E string, and then into a D major chord with it. Oops. So, so once we get to that D, now we have another fill. So that fill right there was, yeah, you want to slightly palm mute this, it helps the notes pop out a little bit. We had this. Open low E, hammer two, hammer five. And then you're gonna play over the second fret on the A string. Hammer five, pull off to the open A. So we have this coming out of this riff. So out of that, we have a D major chord real quick, then to the A major, A major chord, so we have this. And then we do that little fill again. So the same thing. And then we have this.
that right there, the way I played it right there, is kind of similar to what he does in the second verse, actually. It's a little bit easier in this first verse. So what he's doing here is he, when he gets to that... Plays the second flat on the D string, hit the low E once, and then the fifth fret on the D. Then he hits the low E twice, back to the second fret on the D string, low E twice again, back to the fifth fret. So we have this. So, so basically, it's just kind of he started it. It's like a slight little pause there, and it's not really fast. It's very fast. It's not like an actual pause. It's just the timing's a little bit different than the rest of the riff. So we have this. It's one of those things that's weird to play slow. Anyway, so that's, you, you kind of got to lock into the groove. So it's basically, for the most part, he's hitting the low E string twice and rotating back and forth between these two notes in between it. And then he goes, he goes, after he does that twice, then he goes two, four, two on the D. And in between those, he only hits the low E once. So we have this. And then in this first verse, once you get to that part, he actually just goes to the E power chord and strums it a little bit. In the second verse, he's going to continue the riff. So, and then, same little fill again. Back to that D major, and then the same fill again. D to A again. And then we have this ending. So that's that same fill again. It's just these, this little ending here is a C sus2 chord. Now you can add the fifth in the bass, which they do it towards the end of the song, I know. But it sounds good either way. But um, what the chord is, is just barring at the third fret there across five strings. So it's the third fret on the A string, fifth on the D, fifth on the G, and then the third fret on the B and the high E. So it's a C sus2, and then you just take that down to the B sus2, so down one fret. Sung that a few times, and, and then just up with the D major chord to the E major chord there. All right, so really kind of slow going through that whole section looks like this. All right, so this second verse is the exact same as the first one, pretty much, except the very end. So everything is the same. That part. So everything the same. But remember at the end of the first verse, we did this, kind of just did here. Now instead, we're going to do tap the 17th fret on the B and the G. And then like that, we're gonna play, tap them together. It's easier to, you know, I would, you can do it with your middle finger. It's easier for me to switch to my index, uh, which is what Eddie's doing with too. So we have that, you're tapping across those two strings of the 17th fret, then slide up to 80, and then up to 19. And then we jump back into that, um, the chorus, and the first half of the chorus is the same way. It's kind of those two chorus sections, I call it, right there. So it's the same at first. So it goes into that section again. So when we get to that section, it's only the ending is different. So we have this right here. Instead of going into this, it's got a different ending. 
kind of leading us into it kind of goes to F sharp, leads us into the solo there. So yeah, I'll play through that section real quick for you. All right, so like I said, so we're going through that riff is kind of the same as the verse. But as I talked about before, when we get to this riff, see how I kind of continued the riff there instead of just strumming the uh, the low E chord. So that's that's the only little difference there, a little minor. So you just kind of go back to the E, the D, back to the E again. So just continue that riff. I kind of showed you that earlier. And then we had this same thing again. And then here, instead of it doing like we did in the first verse, or of course, Ending there, we have this. So that's going to this F sharp here. That's replacing this section. So just go to the F sharp here on the low E string. I know it's an F now. We are in a flat tuning, but I'm just going to call it F sharp because that's kind of what, how I see it. So it. So we're kind of going back and forth to the uh, this low E string, trying to hit that second fret, that F sharp there. And we have this little melody on the D string with it. So just let's look at the melody first. We have four, five, and then four, five, two, four. So we have this. And then we go four, five, four to end it. So we have this four, five, four, five, two, four. Now, you're going to start with this F sharp. And you want to kind of, between those notes, go back and hit that F sharp again to kind of fill out the sound. Slow it down. All right, so now we get to Eddie's solo. So I'm going to play through this solo for you real quick, and then we'll take a look at it. There we go. So got some uh, uh, some Eddieisms in it, um, things that are kind of run things that kind of run through a lot of his solos. So we're gonna start here with this uh, beginning. It's got a, a bend and release of the seventh fret on the G string. Pull off to five, and then back, hammer back on that seven, and then you're gonna cut kind of, little bar dives there on that seven. And then what he does here, he kind of slides up the G string. He slide up that G string, and then it will play 14, 17, 19 on the B string. All right, now we have this next section, which is very kind of as asymmetrical asymmetrical scale uh, licks that he likes to do. It looks like this. All right, so that is uh, a little bit of a stretcher. We're gonna, we have 14, 17, and then 20 on the high E. Now, this is typical of Eddie. He liked to take uh, kind of really shapes that are kind of stretched out a little bit. This isn't as, he's done a lot more difficult, like Ice Cream Man, stuff like that. This That stuff's crazy, but this one's not as difficult. Um, so anyway, you're, what he's... 
He's doing a series of kind of random, like mostly legato -y licks. If you played any of Eddie's stuff, you probably run into this before. So it's basically just going up through those notes. And he takes the plays the exact same notes on the B string. He's not worried about staying within a key. He's trying to create an effect. So he has this. So we had this. It's kind of got a licks like that down. So. It's kind of a, a one he would use, like 17, 20, and then back to that 17, hammer on 20, pull off, pull off to four. And then kind of do the same thing on the B. Anyway, as you're going crossing, after we do those licks, he go grab that note, you know, he, remember he keeps his fingers on the same fret, so we're over the 20th fret there on the B and then back. So there's a shape that he's playing across, but there's no strict pattern to what he's doing. He's just letting loose across that pattern. You can do anything you want, and it's going to sound pretty much similar. As long as you stay within those two shapes. So there he goes. He does a. So a big band at the 17th fret of the G after it. Then release, pull off to 14, and then play a 17 again. And then um, a couple of vibrato dips on this 17. So. All right, then we have this. So we're playing 17 on the high E, over to 17 on the B, and then a big. So. That's like two and a half step bend. He loved doing this kind of like over bend stuff. So. so I'm playing the 17 on the high E, roll over to 17 on the B, and then that huge bend. And do that again. And then we're going to do it again, but this time, just bend it up a whole step. So it, all right, and then we're down to some uh, kind of bluesy stuff here. Well, how Eddie plays the blues. Um, so we're down really based around A minor pentatonic here, and this is one of those two licks that he's just kind of going for it. Uh, so we start out with just... Kind of bending up the seventh fret on the G, and then the fifth fret on the B, and the fifth fret on the high. End. So you get that far, and then you can do that bend in the seventh again, pull off the five, over to seven on the D, and then seven five on the G. So it's, it does resolve there uh, briefly to the fifth fret there on the G. And then here he goes into a repeated. So this is pretty much based off of uh, start with that bend of seven, and then you play fifth fret on the uh, B, hammer eight, pull off to five, and then over to the seventh fret on the G. So you just repeat those four notes. But of course it's Eddie, so you gotta repeat it at like you know, lightning speed. Every once in a while you hear him go up and grab. He's like right when the accents are required, he'll come up and he'll grab that high A there, which is the the fifth fret on the high E string. So he will hit that every once in a while and then continue with that lit. See that? And then at the very end, when he leaves this lick, he's gonna. 
gonna hammer, he's gonna go over to the high E. Hammer, play five, hammer eight, pull off to five. A bend and a seven, pull off to five, and then into that ending. So it's kind of... So then we just do this D into an E major chord, and then do it again. And then a little pick scrape. And then into the those two chords again, and then a slide up and down. And then uh, one more time, to, and then kill it, and then we get to this little bridge section. So now in this bridge section, we got uh, mostly kind of finger style playing going on. You're gonna roll the volume off to, you know, kind of a lower, kind of a, maybe a little slightly dirty. All right, something like that. So I'm gonna play through this bridge section and then I'll show you how to play it. So here we go. Oh yeah, that's kind of fun. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so what am I doing there? So um, you're gonna first start up here. He does. He's doing his sus chords that he loves to do. So we're up here at this E major chord, really. So the bar costs the ninth fret on the D, G, and the B. You play those, but first have the tenth fret there on the um, B string, and you pick those three strings, and then so you pull off to the nine on the B string. And pick the chord again. So we have this. Now let's take that down two frets. So it's a D major, D sus4 first. So you pull off and then hit the chord two more times. And then, and then we're going to take it down to a sus2 chord. So this is going to be, that's going to be the seventh fret on the D and the G, and uh, that fifth fret there on the, the B string. So we have this. D sus2. And then we'll come back here to the E and do that same thing we did earlier. Then you can take it down to the D chord that we were playing, the seventh fret bar, and then do this. So that's playing the D first, hammering on that G, which is going to make it the D sus4. So we have this. Then back to the D, and then back to the D sus2 that we did earlier. So we have this all together. All right, from there we have this. So that's that starting up here again, pulling off from the E sus4 to the E. And then pick the chord again and then come down to the D. Hit that a couple times. So we have this. And then so you hit that D a couple times and the D sus2. So we have this. And then the D sus4. D. And D sus2. So we have this. Now here we kind of do it more straight through. So that's just doing that E sus4 to E a couple times. So that the same thing on the D. Back to the E. And then this little inning. That the D, the sus4 to the D, the D sus2. And now he's gonna add the low E string in there.
So that's pretty cool. So he's just kind of slowly building, he's building the, the tension there. So we, we're going to have this. How you can pick this is you're now going to, I'm just using these three fingers now for the notes and the chord. And the low E, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the chords. So that's what I'm doing there in the chords at least. I'm playing the D, the, the uh, sus4, the E sus4 to the E and back. So do that twice and then do the pull off the two notes. That's the way this. But in between each one of those hits, I'm hitting the low E string once. So we have this. And then after I do the pull off, I'm going to hit the low E string twice. So we have this. One more time. I'm oh, sorry, here we go. And then the same thing on the D. So I did that same exact pattern on the E, then down to the D, then back up to the E. So I had this. And then we're just going to end it with this, which is that D sus, D sus 4, D, and to the um, D sus 2. Then you kind of slide with the G string and play. Now here, he, he, he's, you can hit harmonics across the G, B, and, and the high E. It sounds like more of what you're hearing on the recording though is he, he's doing the harmonics across, but by the time he gets to the high E string, he's lifted up his finger, so you just have the regular natural high E string. Like that, instead of going, you hear more of this. So, Kind of geek out on this stuff. So then he has this thing where you have the pickup volume on, and he's wise are really trying to build up everything in that kind of breakdown section. He's taking his string and he's you know, doing that kind of tremolo, kind of picking it down, push it down just like we were doing before. But he's doing it and just pushing the string into the pickup. We know he only had one pickup on that guitar, so he's sitting there around this. This is going to be hard to get it unless you have a pickup that's exactly mounted to get the right exact pitch. But that's what that you're hearing there is him doing that kind of technique. All right, from there we go into the final chorus, which is a little bit different. It's also got a little bit longer than the previous choruses, so it looks like this. <laughs> Alright, so we have the same chorus as we did before. So, so when you basically re re repeated that whole thing twice, instead of doing the last little part of that Eddie jumps up and grabs some harmonics. So those harmonics are the 12th fret on the B, then the 12th fret on the high E, then the 7th fret on the A to the 7th fret on the D, and then the 7th fret on the low E to the 7th fret on the A. That's where this. And then kind of slide down the strings, and that takes us to that chorus, second half. Of it. That's the same riff there. 
Now here, when you get to this section, instead of doing this, he just moves up here to this E power chord. So just. So he's just kind of messing around with this E power chord, seventh fret on the A, ninth fret on the D, with the low E there. And he has that little line in there. It almost sounds like this might be on the bass, but it sounds good to do the guitar. It's like, yeah, the ninth fret there, and then slide 10 to 9. So it... So he kind of fills in. It doesn't that, do that E riff there. He just kind of does a little variation there off this E power chord. Back. And now this is kind of like the first verse, first, first chord. That C sus2 to the B sus2. And like I said, add the fifth in the bass. Sounds, especially at the end here. So just let that, instead of just playing the fifth fret on the A, also add the fifth fret, I'm oh, sorry, third fret on the A, play the third fret on the low E with it. And then go back through these chords again. And this last one, you gotta start hitting it in. Just kind of sliding up the low E, up and down. And into a big bend there. Fun stuff. And then kind of bend at the third fret into an E power chord. And then we had this outro section after that E power chord. So hit that E power chord, and then we're basically basing this off of an E dominant nine chord, which we're gonna play at the end, but we have, you take that shape here, especially on these top three strings, and just kind of randomly move all the way up from that E all the way up an octave. So, so you're doing this bar here at the seventh fret all the way up to 19. So when you get there, you gotta build your way. And then he picks the, after he's got that bar going at the 19th, he's gonna pick the B, G, E, B, G. Let that ring out, so blah, 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 and then end the song with that E dominant nine chord I talked about, which is the bar at the seventh fret across the high E, B, and the G. Seventh fret there on the, um, sixth fret on the D, and seventh on the A with the low E with it. All right, that is it for Romeo Delight. It is a fun one. Once you get it down, it just really rocks. I mean, they are the ultimate party band. So if you just want to, if you're feeling down, so I was just listening to Van Halen, you can actually play it, and it just, all of a sudden, it's a hard, hard to be in a bad mood when you're playing this music. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.